moving on. All right, so we got this controller. So the voice of Enigma, we're on bank C and we we're able to control that. So let's go ahead and then you see this little button right here. It says edit. Let's go ahead and just press that. Boom. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So look here. The way the Core Karma works is it gives you two sounds to layer for each program. And then you got combis where you can programs into one combination where you have layers upon layers. We'll get into more combis later, but for right now, I kind of like this sound and I just want it. So it has oscillators, but what they are is they're just, you would think of them as ROM sounds sampled from something else. So you got Synth Air, Vox Rev, and you got Voice Choir Rev. Now look here, it says piano on one layer, but see that's part of the split. And it's weird because the split is controlled by this velocity thing right here. And you could control it and it's a little, it gets a little goofy and I don't like it. I wish they had a better way to control their splits, but so ignore this lower sound and that's, you can see your mixer right here, which has a lower sound. Now, what I want to show you is what we do to disable the reverb. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable the reverb. See right here? Right there. It comes up. You can click on that, but we just highlight on the green, disabled. Now, if we play it, the reverb should be gone. But there's a delay. So let's go ahead and see if we can find the delay. Where's that delay at? So like a mod, oh, there it is, stereo modulation delay. There we go. There it is, modulation delay, that is. All right, so make sure that's disabled. Now, let's see if we can. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to fix the main uh, ADSR. And the ADSR in the Quark Karma is a little weird. So I think, I believe we go into the amp there it is, right here, it's the Amp EG envelope. And it's got all this crap here and this crap here. And I mean, the, the Amp, their ADSR in the Core Karma is actually phenomenal. I mean, you can do some really cool stuff. But the main thing that I wanna do is I wanna take off the release because I'm gonna control the release in the EXS. So I believe if we just do this, Maybe just have like a tiny bit of release. See what that does. There we go. All right, and then the other thing I wanna do is I want to, in order for me to create a good loop sampled in the EXS24, I don't want such a long attack. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the attack off. So we'll just go ahead and just grab it right here. Just bring it up. Bring this over here. It looks like it has like an attack decay. So I'm going to just maybe just give it a little bit of something. And let's see what it sounds like now. All right, so you're hearing that that there's some movement going on in the sound as the longer I hold down the key. So I, I like that movement, and it seems like it's like a movement that goes over time, and, and it's probably controlled by another setting in there in the filter settings. And for the intensive purpose of this this tutorial, I just want to work on the ADSR right now, and and we could. You know, we could do multiple samples if we wanted to, where we could have samples with that that extra movement sound, and we could go into that later on. But I think right now we're just going to focus on that. And what I'll do is, is I'll take my MIDI and I'll just increase it a little bit longer, maybe like two bars, two and a half bars, or three bars. So that way, when I could have a really nice pad sound. So let's go ahead and maybe tweak this up a little bit more, and let's go like something like that. 
And so, yeah, let's see what that sounds like. So you saw how that I, I fixed the ASR in, in this core karma because when we sample it, we're going to control the ASR in the EXS24, like I said earlier. But I just want to point that out. That's important in order to have a really good sample is you want that ASR to, you just want it just short. And when, it, when we're, you know, no, you know, you could probably, I think right now the way it's good, it's just instant on, instant off because when you make the loops and you loop it inside the EXS24 and you have a long attack and then you have a long rear, it doesn't loop well. And you it, it just messes things up. So this is why I'm doing this first. This is how you prep your sample. Okay, so we got all that done. Now the stereographic equalizer. This is, I say this is up to preference. Sometimes I like this on there because they're, Graphic EQ is actually really decent. A lot, almost, I would say a little bit better than Logic has. And the, what's the word I'm looking for? The technology or whatever they're using inside here to do the EQ, I cannot replicate it in Logic. It just, it's very hard for me to replicate. I could probably do like some EQ um matching the logic it does but most of the time i like the way it is i don't even mess with it but we go ahead and just click on it let me show you this is what it looks like it has different settings you got different types you got wide one wide two wide three you know and you're half wide and then you got the different bands and you know this is this is good i i like that you know I, i'm not gonna mess with it you know you got different effects but the stereographic EQ is pretty good so i leave it alone so I think we're good to go. Also, we want to make sure is check that make sure that our our latch and uh, there's another thing that <clears throat> there's like a on off button for it, it basically engages the arc mode for the core karma, and I just want to make sure those are off because you don't want the MIDI get all carried away and run a muck everywhere. So just make those. Two things are turned off. I actually have a setting in here. I actually had them disabled so to begin with, so I don't really have to worry about them in the global mode. And I can show you how to do that later on. You know, but I'm gonna need at least a hundred likes on this video before I, I start telling some more stuff about this. But then again, yeah, maybe I might be in a good mood. All right, so we are um, we are done. With this and so what we could do is we could actually I'll pull this off to the side and if we go ahead and do a test run start off with number nine and see if we can see how that sounds all right so it's a little too fast and what we could do is Maybe we need to stretch these guys out. So, I know. I'm going to have to redo this whole thing. So, we need these things. Now, a lot of times people will do is they'll skip like every fifth note. I don't like doing that. I don't feel like you really get the truest form of a sampled sound when you do that. Here's why. When you tune a piano, every other note, every fifth note is slightly off by, by a certain amount. And it has to be that way in order to play the whole sound. Now, does that apply to, so like a pad sound? Not really, but I noticed like if I'm changing velocities, and I'm messing with the LFO, or if I'm tweaking the resonance, or if I'm doing some advanced trickery with the pitching, I do notice it. 
I do notice some artifacts in the sound if I skip notes in my samples. So that's why I don't do it. Bring this out as far as we can go. Look at that. Yay! It's going, 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 going. There we go. That should be enough. Now, this is going to take a while to sample. So what I'll do is I will actually stop the video or just forward it. So that way you don't have to wait for me to sample all this, but play it from here and see if there's enough space in between and if it gives that, that extra sound that we're hearing and we hold it down longer. We're still gonna need to do it a little bit longer and I didn't really like the sound of it when I had the BPM at 90. I'm gonna keep it 120. And I should have tested it out first. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm just not thinking clearly, but oh well. You know, it's forgiving. Okay, so I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're just going to do eight bars for each sound. You heard that pitching. And it's a long ass pitch, but, you know, for sick tutorial, I should have picked a different sound, but we're stuck with it. I didn't realize that pitching would go so far. But I wanted to capture that whole pitch sound. Interesting. Yeah, so it's it's all it's like eight bars, something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and and you notice I lowered the BPMs a little bit, so hopefully it captured it. By default, I believe all the sounds are set at one twenty on the Core Karma, so that's why I keep it at one twenty. But maybe this will help me. So let's go back over to C1. And I'll forward this part so you don't have to watch me build it all over again. And then we'll skip two bars. Uh, that's good enough. All right. So now, let's just double check everything. Make sure everything is looks good so we're not missing a note. Yeah, it looks good. Da, 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 da. It's going up. It's important that you don't miss any notes because it's going to get our number sequence out of order when we when we batch rename these things. And I got a really cool way on how to how to rename these things. Normally, it doesn't take me this long to do it, but this sample is so freaking weird long. But I wanted to sample it anyway. So, all right. All right, so I think it's good. I guess we'll, time will tell if we did this right. Let's sample it. Okay, so let's go ahead and we make sure our R is checked. And let me show you a trick. Go file preferences or pr logic preferences, audio, something like that. Let over here. Make sure that when you, that your processing threads are eight, they give you more processing power. Yeah, under general, there is a, a setting, independent monitoring level flow of recording enabled ch channels. Check that and uncheck the other one. So that way, if you just wanna monitor something and you don't wanna record it, you can just hit the little I and you can listen to it. And you don't have to have the R enabled. But if you want to sample this, make sure your R is enabled because it won't record it. That's all.
hit the record button up here, or the key command R. Make sure that your volume is up. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually put in a limiter. There we go. And then also on the uh, input that's coming out of my core keyboard into my Elisis, I want to make sure that my volume is almost up all the way. And then the other thing I want to do is the volume on my keyboard. I have a volume button on the core karma. I want to make sure that that is not all up full way, but maybe around 90%. And then I make sure that my volume on my Elisis mixer that it's coming into which is then going to logic is at around 90%. And then let's go ahead and let's, cause I want full volume when I sample this. All right, now let's hit the command command R to record it. Let's go out a little bit. I feel like it didn't give me any leeway. Uh, make sure nothing else is checked with an R it's only this one. For some reason that one is, it's okay. All right. Now we hit the R command. Oh, that sounds cool. Perfect. You saw how it had that space of quiet. That's going to be good. This will come out really well. I hope this helps someone out there. Please subscribe. Give me a like. More of this networking kind of stuff with music. And if you have any questions, concerns, drop me a comment. I usually respond back within the hour or so. Remember, my friends, big groovy.